There's two questions I get asked a lot in my comments. One, Deltia, how many attribute points do you have? Two, Deltia, can you do X with X weapon? So I want to answer both of those questions in this video and maybe give you some, some insight into how attributes, weapons, and or stabs work as far as damage. First off, let's go to our character screen here and explain a couple values that are really important. You got spell damage and weapon damage. Now, obviously these are kind of self-explanatory. Weapon damage is weapon damage, right? So you would assume you know how damage is done. Not so fast, as Lee Corso says. Basically your weapon damage comes from these different types of weapon. Dual wield, even destruction, you're actually staff damage. Your staff damage, your light attacks will be weapon damage. The abilities, as you can read them, well, based off your spell damage, because they're magical. Now, patch 1.6, this is the public test server, does a lot better at explaining how damage works. So, for instance, I morph puncturing sweeps. If you read the morphs now, biting jabs, the new effect, ability now scales off weapon damage and max stamina. So, that's how this works, is that if I'm a staff user and I use a magic-based ability, it's going to scale off my spell damage, uh, but also my max magicka. Both things are really important. So you can have a ton of spell damage, but if you don't have hardly any magicka, you're not going to hit very hard. Same thing goes with max magicka. You could have tons of max magicka, but if your spell damage isn't very high, you're not going to hit very hard. Those things factor in together to produce, bang, huge, huge damage. You like that? I don't know what that means, but yeah, that's for you at home. Okay, so spell damage... You got max magicka, same thing over here. You got stamina, weapon damage. Those things are how you determine how hard you hit. Now there's also a multiplier. You've heard of critical before. Some of you haven't. What a critical hit is, is a hit that does 1.5 damage. So assume if your normal hits 100, this is gonna hit for 150. So critical is super valuable in this game. This is the only game I know that really doesn't have a soft cap on critical meaning a cap where you can't really increase it anymore, it's more it's harder to increase it. But that being said, weapon critical is incredibly viable. You have to keep using weapon critical and keep upping it or spell critical, whatever your thing is, because it hits so, so hard. I think it's just incredibly valuable. So if I'm a staff user, Deltia, how do I do more damage? You want to maximize your magicka, maximize your spell damage, and get more critical. How do we do that? Um, let's talk about stamina because that's what I'm playing, a, a stamina-based Templar. So for my stamina build right now at 1.6, what I've been testing is around 20,000 stamina is a good mark, 20,000 health, something like that. Really 10,000 damage a second single target is what you're aiming for. Now in a group, you're going to get higher damage because you're going to have buffs and debuffs on the, ar the enemy. So they're going to reduce their armor, they're going to, you know, increase your damage. All those things will apply to help you do more damage. If you're asked testing this on your own, you got to remember, in a group of 12 people, there's going to be so many more m buffs, major and minor, um, so you're going to do a lot more damage. But if you're off on your own just testing DPS, if you get 7,000 a second, that's a good mark. So continuing along this path of explaining all this stuff, your passives go, go into it. Which, speaking of which, passives. Deltia, how many attribute points do you put in stuff? Stop worrying about attribute points. They're really not that important. They're really not. What's important to know is that if you ask me that, there is so many factors that get involved in answering this. What armor you're wearing? What race are you? What passives do you have? How many points do you have in the champion system? All these things, I just can't answer it because there's so many variables that it's so hard to answer that question. What is more important to know about is how much stamina do you have? How much health do you have? Have you hit those key numbers yet? As an Imperial, for instance, I think that's what race I'm on the BTS. Yeah, as an Imperial, I get 10% more stamina. So if someone asks me, Delta, how many attribute points do I have? I'll say, well, 20 or whatever it may be. And then you'll go, well, I put 20 into this. How come I didn't get it? That's why. Racial passives. Also, now you have the added thing of the champion system, so it gets even more complex. So I would say stop worrying so much about attribute points and start worrying about how to get those values up. So for me, for instance, on getting those values increased, 
right now, I think the current meta in the game, the best on target damage you can get is rocking a five piece from the trials. So it's infallible aether for magic users and it's vicious ophidian for um, stamina users. Now, not everyone's gonna have that. I totally understand that. The best thing you can do is substitute this with a five piece probably or a four piece um, you know, Twilight's if you're a magic user, or maybe even a Hunting's Rage if you're a stamina user. Then a lot of people are using a two-piece head damage set. Mephalia is probably the best single target for magic and or stamina. And you can do like a healer one, Bogdan's, you can do engine guardian for more, so on and so forth. So if I were you, I would look at a five-piece chest, belt, boots, legs, gloves of something that's really powerful, magic and or stamina. And then a two-piece here. So, people ask me, Delta, can I do a magic build with a two-hander? Well, the answer is yes. You can do whatever you want. But is it going to be effective? No. The reason why is, if you're using a two-hander, how does the damage get done from a two-hander? It's stamina, and it's max weapon damage, like we said. So if you're using that in light armor, you're getting light armor passives. You're not getting all the cool medium passives like this increases your strike your critical strike damage by the amount of wearing increases your stamina regeneration reduces cost increases your weapon damage so using light armor gives you all of these stats for magic light armor for magic medium for for this now if you were to use a two-hander and maybe just use one stamina ability to like leap in that works. So like, for instance, there's people that use magical builds and have daggers. The reason why they do that is because the, the passes for daggers, maybe they want to get this, I don't know, maybe this, this twin blunt blade and they want to do bleed damage with their axes. I have, a, I have a build just for that. Or maybe they want to come in and use quick cloak. So increase movement speed. So actually they're a magic user, but they just use that for, you know, an ability or two. That's how you make a build. Remember, if you want to do damage, it's scaled off of those two things I showed you earlier. Stabs, uh, you know, your magic user, it's going to stay off of magic, your max magic, how much you have, and your spell power. Remember, those two things are key, more so than attribute points, more so than anything else. So for me, what I like to get, roughly, PvP and PvE are two different things. You also have to remember that. PvE, you're going to want max critical. Why? Because... You can't, they can't resist your critical hits. The NPCs don't have crit resistance. In PvP, the enemies do have crit resistance. Now, that's gotten nerfed significantly, so you might want to do a little bit more crit. But PvE, you want to maximize crit, maximize your stamina and or weapon damage. For PvP, I go more resources, because you're fighting against other players. You can't taunt another player and then they come, come to you know your buddy. You have to, to survive. And so remember, you can't do any damage when you're dead laying as a corpse. So I go more sustained, less critical. So I would go more stamina recovery, less maybe weapon critical, because players can have critical resistance. That's why. Attribute points, once again, don't get too worried about them. A good benchmark, if, if you were to maybe mid-max this a little bit, I like, and, and 1.6, I found it kind of effective right around 35 to 40% critical, and then dumping the rest into your, your main stat, what I call your main stat, so stamina or magic, depending on what you're using, um, and go that route. That's what's been important to me. Right around 20,000 health is a good mark, but if you go lower, you can. Well, I've been getting one shot around 17,000 health, so really anything above that seems effective. Remember, 10,000 DPS is a good number. Now, these are all end-game numbers. So if you're starting out and you're learning the game, that's how weapon damage is done. And that's why attributes are so important, or not that important, to be completely honest. Because what I do is I do health on my head, my chest, and my leg, always. Because health gives you more, more stats if you put them in these slots, because they're larger slots. You won't, don't believe me? For instance, I have the exact same glyph in my Ophidian jacket that I do in my belt. A large piece gives me 700 health, a small piece gives me 257 stamina. So I optimize my health stats there, and then I play with my attribute points to get me at those important numbers instead of vice versa. That's how I deal with attribute points. And that's how I get max stamina, max weapon damage. Now, 
to get more critical, I play around with my jewelry. So jewelry is a good as a good place to maybe jewelry and weapons is a really good place to kind of see where you're at critical wise and try to up those values there. There's a couple more crypt tricks I found to optimize your stats in 1.5 and beyond. So let's get a couple passives here to kind of show you some things. So I'm on a templated character so I can just basically buy all the passives and all this gear. So I'm gonna buy it. So first things first, let's examine light armor. The light armor difference is that essentially your your five piece gives you spell critical, but there's nothing in here to give you spell power. Now, if you go to medium armor, you get your critical from your dexterity bonus, and you get your um, power from agility. So you get power and critical. That's why medium armor. One of the reasons why medium armor is really powerful now. Why does that even matter? The reason why is my gear setup for 1.6 and beyond is going to be five pieces of light. One heavy, one medium. Delta, why the hell would you do that? Great question. Remember how I said that uh, this is scaled off of your max stats? You cannot beat Undaunted Metal. Increases your max stamina and Magicka by 2% uh, per gear you're wearing. So if I wear two kinds of gear, I get tons more stats. How can we show this off? So let's let's do a little experimente. That's not even a word, that's just something dumb. All right, so I'm going to do... So with five or seven pieces of medium, let's write this down, right, for kids at home. 30% critical. I have 22 415 stamina. So if I look at my ability here, it does 2286. Now, that's what the 2% the bonus here on my Undaunted. Watch what happens when I equip a piece of light. 22815. I lost some critical, but guess what? Steel Tornado actually hits harder. The reason it hits harder is because I have more stamina. Wait one. Now let's even equip a piece of heavy gear. I lost a little more critical, so 1%, but I gained 2300 stamina. So now look at it, even harder. So with medium armor, I'm probably gonna go five, I'm probably gonna go seven pieces of medium armor, but with light, there's no critical bonus for the amount of armor that you're wearing. Because Dexteria increases your critical strike rating for each piece of medium armor equipped. However, light is only five pieces. When it says a full set, that's five pieces. So it makes sense for me to do five of uh, light, one in one. That's gonna optimize your, your uh, max magicka, making you hit harder. For medium builds, I'm gonna try to do seven medium, maybe five, depending, five, one, one. Five, one, one is gonna be the new recipe, I believe. And I wanted to tell you guys first, so you can be the first to kind of, hey, guess what I learned? I'm going to use potions, and guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go 5-1-1 and show all these fools out of DPS, right? That's what we're going to do, right? So these are some of the tips that I've learned um, in the future, how damage is done, why attributes aren't that big of a deal, and how you can optimize wearing your armor to do damage. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. More to come on Elder Scrolls Online and beyond. Stay tuned, subscribe if you haven't, and always come back. There's going to be a lot of cool videos coming up. So I appreciate you guys watching, and stay tuned for more.